I, I've been reading articles that are that uh, wonder out loud whether small town America can survive this. Yeah. What is your opinion? Uh, listen, small town America will survive. There, there will be sadly casualties, and we have to be sure that we're standing with them. It's why the federal government and state governments have to be really helpful to small business owners. But uh, you know, they they know how to innovate on down in downtowns like Beacon and, and communities like ours. So I think what you'll see is as we start to grapple our way and, and claw our way back. We've learned how to lean on technology, how to lean on each other. I think that there are businesses that, that will learn and have learned how to be more innovative. Uh, but the struggle is going to be real. I just think that there's a, there's a sense that we come back home in a lot of ways. There's sort of this rekindled humanity. And I think that you'll see that on Main Streets when we can finally uh, open the doors. A lot of the money made um, by towns comes from income taxes. With people losing their jobs, that revenue is going to go down. Where where do you stand right now with taxes? Yeah, well, the county really relies on sales tax, and we're, 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 we're likely to experience as much as a $75 million loss in revenue. And, and counties like ours all across the country, you know, we're the frontline response. We're, we are the pandemic response for states and for the country, and we've been calling on Congress for, for assistance. For Duchess to be able to overcome $75 million means as many as 200 jobs, and we can't possibly afford that. So we're saying to Congress, as you're, as you're working to support businesses, and they ought to, uh, we also need the help to continue to provide services. Well, let me ask you about that, because there's a fight now between um, governors across the country, this governor, uh, Andrew Cuomo, and, and the White House about needing funding, and Congress about needing funding for the states. Where do you stand on that, and what would your message be to the federal government? This is a, an emergency, and in emergencies, America comes together to support one another, and whether it's a flood, a fire, or a pandemic, uh, we have to be there for, for each other. And this country has always come through with FEMA assistance and greater, and greater aid. You know, I'm sorry that we're a bigger state. Uh, we send a lot of money to Washington, uh, but there are, there are counties, especially all across America, when the president wants a test site, we're the ones that set it up. When governors want us to track cases, we're the ones that have to respond. So we need, the, we need that support from Congress. And I, I, I believe that they'll summon the political courage to do what's right. Let me just ask you a quick question, because the wearing of a mask has almost become a political issue with some people who are supportive of the president, uh, or maybe, maybe even party lines. If you uh, believe one thing or another, you're going to wear a mask or you're not going to wear a mask. As somebody who's experienced this loss, what is your message to those who are not social distancing, not wearing a mask, not taking this virus as seriously as others? Listen, be considerate. Uh, there are families like mine uh, who, who didn't overcome this challenge. We, we lost uh, a loved one. Uh, doing this is the least selfless thing that we can do in order to protect one another and slow the spread of the disease. And we'll get back on our feet. Just be considerate.